one phase. And there's the other right there. See the branches that burnt in the way through there. So that's kind of an odd one. What's up guys, thanks for stopping in. We just got a uh, no power call. There's 458, like I said, customers out of power. So as soon as the call showed up, I got an alert on my computer and we're just bringing up the line here now. So looks like this, this entire line, this blue line right here, that whole line is out. The substation is located right here. So we're gonna approach from that side there. And the dispatch checked the calls. There's quite a few calls coming in and somebody reported that they saw sparks coming off a pole right around there. So we're not going to uh, delay any longer. We're going to start heading in that direction and we'll see if we can't capture something along the way. Something see you guys soon. We're here at the substation now. One of the first steps we're going to do as we arrive to the outage is check that the reclosing device is locked open. So where we're on a main feeder, it's not just a typical cutout where a fuse blew. There's uh, what we call an interruptor in this particular case. And oftentimes that interruptor will actually close back in uh, to try and clear the fault. It could be a small branch, burns off the lines, closes back in and restores power. That's why sometimes your lights go off and back on and it doesn't result in an outage. In this case, if it was a high current fault, if it was extremely close to the sub, it may have locked out on the first shot. It's uh, quite a ways from the substation where the customer reported the fire. So uh, I'm assuming it did operate a few times. A lot of the customer complaints probably reported that the lights flickered off and on a few times before going out. So we're gonna verify that the device is locked open. And then that way, once we confirm the fault area, we may be able to isolate the work area and close this back and restore power to view the customers. We might be able to see here without going inside the sub. Now, Okay, so that's not what we expected. Hard to see in camera, but those little clear domes at the bottom of the device are red. So that is still energized. This line is, in fact, still energized. That's not what we expected to see at all in this case. A good way to remember the indicators between the green and red is a red bit see a red color and here we got another alert it just showed up on the computer what's going on here bear with me one sec guys I have to verify that there's not emergency emergency information that just came in Established herself to arrived. That's uh, that's strange. I really expected that the teleraptor would be in the open position. Um, really glad we did stop here before going straight to the location. So this really doesn't make any sense right now, actually. Just verifying my feeds and okay, there is actually another reclosing device between us and the faults. Just gonna bring up the location. This is so much easier 
with today's technology, we used to have to do all this stuff out of a, out of a book. Pages and page, pages in a binder. So what I'm doing, I'm just scrolling on the screen following the line. There's, there's lots of switches, but they're solid blade switches so that they won't, uh, they won't open up automatically in the event of a fault. And I didn't think there was any fused switches between us and the fault, but there... I do believe there is one more reclosing device. And there it is, right there. Alright, so we are going to head there right now. This, this, this one here, it's almost going to be open, sure, but we do want to verify that. Alright, so we just rolled in to the next recloser on the line. It's, uh, this one is an oil, oil type recloser. We're going to verify that this one is open, which, which I expect this time that it is. So there's our recloser device there, and on the back side, we can see that the yellow handle is in the down position. So that recloser is open. The backups, solid copper blades, are not. So no, now that we know that recloser is in the open position, we're going to go investigate where the customer reported that they've seen some sparks. Just going to bring that address back up on the map here. Hopefully it's uh, it's just a branch on the line that we can clear with sticks and then simply close that yellow handle back in. If not, if we get a if we have to go hands on the line, then we will have to open those copper blades, the backups. We'll uh, open those up and then we'll have to verify that the this, this is a feed through line. We'll have to verify the switches on the other end of the line are open as well. Alright, let's head down the line. So that's good news, that's really good news. For the report from in that it was a pole on fire, it's actually nothing more than a branch. So that's what we got right here. You can see the burn marks on the branch on the one phase. It is a, a three phase recloser, so a fault just on the one phase will take out all three. It's um, may ne unnecessarily open the other two phases some might say, I guess, but it does shut off all three phases, which for one is much safer, and two, uh, three phase customers. It's, it's not good to run equipment off of two out of three phases. So once we lose one phase and all three go out, it's, it's much better for our industrial customers, which there are a few on this line. Oftentimes, when I get on these main feeders, especially a secondary, busy secondary highway like this, one of my first steps will be to call in for backup and traffic control. This one here, we're able to get our truck off the road for safety, and uh, we're going to be able to wrap this one up without any extra help or store power here rather quickly. So, let's see if we can't clear that line with the telescopic stick and saw and uh, and then of course we have to patrol where it is off a reclosure we do want to do a quick patrol the rest of the line in case there's wires down or something before we energize that rubber gloves and we've got our saw blade
Is Great on the one with the transformer? Or the next one? No, down? it's over. Like where my white car is. Yeah. Like you pass my guy with the third one, you'll see the tree there. Okay. On the top there. All right, so we've got the branch here. As you can see where it made contact with two separate phases and burn. But uh, customer also just stopped by and said he saw flames coming out about three poles down. So we're gonna go check that out right now as well. So it appears as if there's a branch on the line here as well this one's a little bit trickier luckily if i have to i can set up my blue truck in this driveway but there's uh, a whole lot of clearance to get my boom out of the cradle so we're going to try to tackle this one with the extendo stick as well and also i see the particular limb that came down is on a tree that's already been tagged that means one of our tree crews is going to be coming down this line and uh Turning out this whole line in the very near future, which is probably a good thing. So, I'm not going to be able to see much on this one. We'll try our best here. phase and there's the other right there see the branches that burnt the way through there so that's kind of an odd one I suspect that first branch that we found which quite obviously had arced it uh, that one probably happened in the past because it burnt off the main part of the tree must have activated the reclosing device and that would have reclosed back in and just hung there burnt this one here you could you could smell you could smell the uh, charred branch so this this was definitely our guy so not too bad we're only about 25 minutes deep into the call right now this is gonna be pretty quick pretty quick restoration for a 400 plus customer outage. All we gotta do now, we've gotta patrol the rest of the line, of course, in case there's not two but three coincidences, which I really, really can't see it. But uh, we do wanna patrol the rest of the line, it's not gonna take long. And we'll go set up and close that recloser device back in. Where we didn't open the backups, just a matter of closing in that handle. It's gonna be pretty quick and easy to re-energize this line. Hey, Mike Karen here. All right, so I'd like to report, or uh, actually first, uh, 8013R008 was in the open position. And then we found, uh, oh. Uh, yeah, R008. Yeah, 8013R008. So we patrolled the line and removed branches that were burnt at two locations, uh, 8013 pole 354 and 8013 pole 361. 
and the rest of the line is clear. Temp 354 and 361, 10-4. 10-4, four. Four, that's correct. 10-4, you said I can go ahead. Yep, you said I can go ahead and close. 8013, or 008, and report. Perfect, won't be long. All right, thanks, bye. All right, so we are about to close the line in from the ground using the oil recloser. We're going to be picking up, what did I say, 400 and... 50 approximately customers. I'm gonna jump over this ditch and try not to get wet. Now when I close this in where we're picking up so many customers, there's a chance you might hear not only a clunk when it closes in, but a second one as the uh, the OR could actually trip just from, from load once or twice. That'd be a cold load pickup. All right, here we go. Should hear a little clunk. There we go. Power is back on. 450 customers. Just like that. So that's that's not bad at all. 450 customer outage with less than a 40 minute duration. Now our last step will be to report to the dispatch that we have the line closed back in. And uh, we'll run down the line, make sure everyone's power is back on. Uh, 8013. Or zero zero eight close back in and holding. Perfect. All right, thanks, man. All right, thanks. But all, right, all right, awesome. Like I said, that that could have been much worse. That was a fairly quick restoration for for such a large amount of customers. Oftentimes it is when you're on main feeders. Um, those reclosers are super easy to operate. You don't need to usually set up your truck or nothing. So. Uh, also, the, the main line, the primary, the high voltage, is typically a much bigger wire. It doesn't burn down even with really high temperature arcing. It, it doesn't typically burn down as often. So I did mention when I was closing it in about that, that thump. That's when the, the reclosing device, the internal mechanism, closed back in. Sometimes more so in the extremely hot temperatures or extremely cold. When there's a lot of load on the line from heat or AC. That might clunk back open once they close it in. It might trip one or two times sometimes even three times it'll lock itself back out if if that's the case the first step we usually do is patrol the line again make sure we didn't miss anything once we're fairly certain that we didn't miss anything then you have to sectionalize and and start initiating the cold load pickup procedure basically if you have means of checking the amperage you can do that um, there's some electronic devices on the lines that can check it i've got my amp stick my radio amp stick that's in a video I made a year ago that works excellent for checking amperage but if the line's not energized we can't check the amperage so the dispatch may have some history of the typical amperage on the line and basically what we'll do is we'll go halfway down the line open a sectionalizing point open a set of solid blade switches when we close in that recloser we're picking up half the amount of customers it's a lot less stress in the system there's a lot less of a inrush current that will trip that back out we basically wait 15, 20 minutes, whatever, for the load to cool back down as everybody's electronics and heat that activates kind of tapers off, settles down a little bit, and then we'll go further down the line and close in the next set of switches. Sometimes this process can take hours. Sometimes you have to open many, many points of switching, especially in a long, an outage that's been out for a few days or extreme temperatures. All right, so thanks for stopping in. As usual, guys, it was, it was a quick outage. That's, that's good. It's it's hard sometimes to know whether or not to jump the gun on calling for backup crews. Hold that thought. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. That was just the boss calling, wondering if I, if I needed any help. But uh, so what I was going to say, when, when you get these calls like this, when there's, when there's a lot of customers out, you, you want to respond as quickly and as safely as possible. So most times, especially in, on this road, it's a, it's a bad road, I'll... Uh, I'll call for another crew as well as traffic control, get them on their way there. If, if you get there and it ended up being nothing, no, no big deal. I'll, I'll never, I'll never get any, there'll never be any repercussions for, from management for, for doing that. Um, sometimes if I'm not too far, in this case I was 15 minutes away, it, it was worth me taking the drive up to investigate 
that way we didn't interrupt another crew and, and have to hire some some contracted traffic control to, to work on the area it was it was a fairly simple outage that we were able to resolve in less than 40 minutes we lucked out today it was a fairly easy job um, you got to take my truck into the shop that's where I was heading before I get this call but as always thanks for stopping in guys uh, love being able to take you along to see what we do as Lyme and how we respond to outages, the different steps we take in the restoration process, why sometimes it takes so long, why sometimes we're able to do the work so quickly. The biggest, most important thing is the safety of the members of our working force and of the public. So thanks for stopping in guys and we'll see you next time.